it's cold. It's somewhere between zero and minus 10, but I have to make the vlog because commitment, right? How's it going for, wait, I said I'd try something new. Um, what is up fellow light hunters? My name is Ilya and welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. We are currently in Pegasus, which is a horse stable right behind me. We're doing kids camps and I decided to use the opportunity to record another cool video. One of the things I decided to do for my videos this year is repeat some of the successful steps that I did for my videos last year. So I'm gonna do another video on the lens ball. The lens ball is a really trending type of photography on Instagram and I've received thousands of views across my lens ball videos and most of my questions and active engagement comes from those videos. One of the videos I did was replacing the contents of the lens ball which was fun, but now I'm gonna take it up a level and take a picture of the lens ball in the night setting and then replace the contents of it into kind of daylight. The trick with that is to, to, to sell the effect, you have to have the lens ball glowing onto the snow below. So we're either gonna be using one of these cool lights that I used to set up for the vlog or just a phone, that's also enough. And maybe I'm gonna use the phone just because it's easier for you guys, for those of you who don't have this kind of cool light LED setup. So for this whole experiment, we're actually gonna need four separate photos. Hold it right there. I realized later that it's only three images, not four, because there are no reflections coming from the side of the camera, so there's no, no need for that reflection map image. Go back. We're gonna need a simple photo of the lens ball with the background, which we're gonna pull the background out of. We're gonna need a photo with the lens ball and the phone hovering over it for the glow effect on the snow. And we're gonna need the daylight photo of the same subject. Okie dokie, so these are our three images of the lens ball. This one is the main image uh, where we're gonna pull the background from and everything. Uh, this is the light map. So I literally took my phone and hovered over the phone. Let me check the settings it was on. It was on F9, the aperture was at nine, it was at six millimeter 1000 ISO and a shutter speed of 10 seconds so during those 10 seconds I was waving my phone around and this is the daylight picture we're gonna be putting inside lens ball so let's drag all of these into Photoshop and get on to the next step of course you're gonna to want to edit the pictures to your taste put on any filters you want make sure they're all the same so you can synchronize them later I made the lens ball glow picture a little bit warmer than the rest so it casts a kind of yellowy light but that's also something you can do in Photoshop okay so first let's go to lens ball glow picture copy it and paste it on top of of our main background picture make a copy of the background so it's not locked and we're gonna go edit auto align layers and just let them auto align so they're perfectly in sync so we can mask one over the other and when they're synced I'm obviously gonna crop it so that we don't have those little edges picking out since the layers kind of moved a little bit okay so now they're aligned and I can put a black mask on top of the second layer so that it disappears and we're gonna take a brush and start masking in parts of the image, primarily the glowing things. Now it's okay if we leak over onto the lens ball because right now it's not important, we're gonna be replacing the content anyway. But what is important right now is the light we're putting onto the snow. Now it looks like we're just dodging it or whatever the other tool is called. It looks like we're just putting white paint on the snow, but it's not really the same. It wouldn't sell the effect as well because this is actually the image of the light leaking on the snow. So it's actually realistic. I just dropped something. It might be a little bit too strong for you or even too weak right now, but you can tweak that later. And some of these tweaks we're gonna be tweaking throughout the entire video and some of them we're gonna leave to the end just to balance it out to your own taste. So now we take the daylight picture and I'm actually gonna crop it larger than it is already because I want a full square so that we can get maximum space for this spherizing filter. Now I'm just gonna uh, select the top and bottom white bars and do a content aware fill which will fill it in with what's needed to complete the picture. This is a pretty easy picture to do that with and it's gonna look pretty good. Okay now before we get into spherizing I want to actually add a more interesting sky because this looks pretty white and pale and boring and I just searched up sky in the Pexels plugin and it's gonna download this nice blue sky for me which I can replace. Obviously I'm gonna resize it first so it fits nicely into our frame. Move it up above the house where it actually is and change the blending mode. If you know in blending options, there's a blend if function. So I pretty much said it that if the underlying layer is dark, then it doesn't blend, which is a pretty easy way to blend layers together. So I'll take the mask and I'm gonna hand mask the rest of it. Make sure the trees pop out a little bit more and make sure that roof isn't disappearing in the background. And I'm actually gonna use the burn tool to burn the background a little bit because in reality, if the trees were in front of such a bright background, they'd be a little bit darker. Honestly, I don't like the saturation much, but those trees are hardly gonna be visible in the final product anyway. So 
it doesn't make much difference. So back we go to brushing. I'm gonna make this a pretty hard brush because we need a nice straight line on the roof. Shift click on two points and it's gonna mask the roof back in. I'm also gonna rasterize the layer and blur it a little bit. Well, not that much, just a tiny bit so it fits into the image more because the image we dragged in is quite a bit sharper than the image we took because it was downsized. So that just, just sells the effect a tiny bit better. One final touch is getting a sun ray. Where's my favorite sun? There's this one of these pictures. Yeah, this one. I like to use it a lot. It's got a really nice look to it and it's easy to mask in as a kind of sun ray overlay. Drag it in. I'm going to turn it into screen blending mode overlay mode thing right away. And I'm uh, just going to bump up the levels so that it sticks out a little bit more. Flip it upside down because I like the longer rays on the bottom side leaking over the house. Place it in position, make it a little bit bigger just so it's like in your face because remember all this is pretty small. And then I'm just going to take a brush and mask out all the ugly top part. It's kind of hard, I need it to be softer. That's fine, a little bit bigger, mask it out, I need it to be a little bit bigger, mask out the corners and it's fine. Of course it kind of blends into the white. Unfortunately, it would look way stronger and brighter if it was in the blue part of the sky. But now we can pretty much place it anywhere around the house and it's gonna look decently decent. Okay, so I'm gonna merge all of these together in a new layer and finally go to the spherize tool, which is gonna make our whole thing look like the contents of the lens ball. You'll find that under filters, distort spherize. I'm gonna put it at 100%. And actually for some pictures, this could be enough but I just want to squeeze it a little bit more. So with control F, I'm going to repeat the filter and it's going to make it. Um, why am I looking for filters? Control F is going to make it even stronger. Now, that might be too much. So it's really up to you how far you want to go. But again, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I am doing it really rough. So transform, make it smaller, position it around the lens ball, make sure it aligns with all the corners. That should be good. Now the blending mode goes to screen uh, or lighten or screen. Kind of flip through the blending modes. It depends on the picture. Some of them may look better. I don't want it to be normal. I want some of the texture of the lens ball and the snow to show through so it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now we need to start masking out the snow underneath because obviously the entire lens ball is not seen. And I know this is kind of an iffy solution to this because <laughs> Technically, there's, you could do this without the lens ball. It just helps it make look more realistic. You could literally just take a picture of the house and put this sphere in front of it and it's gonna look okay. This is slightly more realistic for the best version. You should actually leave your camera for a couple hours from when it's light to when it's dark in the exact same position. So you take a picture of the lens ball in the house when it's light and then lens ball in the house when it's dark. And then literally just put one picture on top of the other and and mask out the lens ball so that you just have the day went over but you don't always have the luxury to do that especially when there are people walking around and things happening you can't just leave your camera in the same spot for hours and expect it to not move uh, plus this is kind of an exercise for your intermediate photoshop skills and it's fun to make. Now, the thing that we couldn't accomplish with the phone is the light leak immediately under the lens ball, which would probably in real life circumstance be a lot brighter. So we're gonna make a layer of just white paint and then tweak the opacity um, to make just this little two or three millimeter strip around the lens ball a lot brighter as though the lens ball is glowing onto the snow. And I'm actually gonna separate it into several layers and make each layer thinner, but also um, not as opaque so that you kind of gradually get it into a brighter and brighter light towards the lens ball. Okay, so now the lens ball kind of looks like it's sitting in the snow. You have that effect. You might want to make it brighter or less bright depending on your preference as always. And now it's time to start working on the lens ball itself because obviously things are not going to be as crisp and sharp and looking otherworldly as they are right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is start blending um, the circumference of the lens ball because first of all the circle we cut out with the marquee tool is way too sharp sharper than any elements on the image so they need to be blurred plus if you look at pictures of lens ball the outside parts of the lens ball are always less sharp than the center of the lens ball so we're just gonna go around in a circle and unsharp the parts of the lens ball which are closer to the outside to make it more realistic and then you have the center of it which is really sharp next I'll make a new layer with a black mask and I'm gonna select the lens ball minus the selection of the mask of the snow mask 
and put that mask on. So pretty much we have the lens bar that's peeking out masked and we're gonna take a fat white brush and just paint around the circle of the lens ball because again, if you look at pictures of a lens ball, as it goes out to the surface, it starts fading because of the way the light bounces through it. And then we lower the opacity down. I, I'm, I keep saying the same thing, but it just all these steps taken to make it look more realistic. And I'm gonna actually take the background lightness down more so it looks like it's actually night and not dusk or blue hour or whatever and that makes the lens ball just pop out and make it look like it's a light source play around with this a little bit just to figure out um, how light or how dark I like it and I'm actually gonna color it a little bit more because I want it to look like it's daylight inside the lens ball and daylight is more yellow than generally lights during the night so that's kind of greenish so I'm gonna take away a bit a little bit of the green make it more orange and that, again, sells the effect a little bit better. You see what these little stripes do to it? Um, let's colorize this as well to make it more yellow. Saturation, lightness a little bit down. Too much. Make it yellow. Hmm. That's fine. So all these little filters are not perfect. If you want this image to look really good, you need to spend a long time on each of these details, figuring out what makes it look realistic and good and not too fake, I guess. But this is just me going through the steps to show you an idea. And maybe if you come up with something better, then share it with me somewhere. And if I think it's cool, I'll definitely share it either in my Instagram stories or in my next vlog. I guess we'll see. Last thing I want to do is add a starry sky to fill in that boring block of sky that's over the house. And that's pretty easy. It's even easier than the blue sky we did on the yellow house because we don't have to do blend diffs. We, we literally just position it and mask out the bottom part with a paintbrush because everything's blurry anyway. So you just need a soft brush to roughly uh, mask out the location. So I'm, I'm using a pretty soft one around the trees and all those branches because it looks soft. But then for the roof of the house, which is pretty straight, I'm gonna make it smaller so that it's not as fluffy to mask that out. And it looks good again play around with the blending modes to see what you like screen just looks super bright right now but maybe that's what we want and then of course i'm going to box blur it so it looks um so you get that depth of field that we have going on in our photo but you still have the milky way and that streak from the plane so it just adds a bit to the image to make it more interesting Alternatively, you could flip the contents of the lens ball because in a real life situation, when you when you take photos through a lens ball, they're upside down. But uh, since we're doing this whole fantasy, you know, otherworldly thing anyway, we might as well flip it to make it look upright. And there you have the final photo. Again, it's not perfect. It could take two or three hours to make it a really good photo. But uh, this is just an, a concept we did in 15 minutes and hopefully inspires you to do something similar. Well, that is the end of this fun video. I hope it was useful. I hope this is something you can try in your photography. If you try this, send me the results either in a YouTube comment or on my Instagram account where I post a lot of photos every single day. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'm gonna see you guys next week. And I have to change that part of the vlog around too because it's so repetitive.